Hello and welcome to today's Capping Corner. We are going to talk about the winter stakes on Saturday at Aqueduct. And this is an interesting field. It has nine horses and none of them really stand out. So we're going to take a look first at risk taking because he's five to two on the morning line. Now risk taking is trained by Chad Brown. So you would expect his odds to be kind of low, but he hasn't really been bet in his three starts. He's been three to one, four to one, five to one, but he broke his maiden at nine furlongs on this track. So that's a heavy reason to consider him because he already has nine furlong experience and he won over Aqueduct. What do you think of risk taking? Risk taking has experience at nine furlongs. He already won at that distance and he has the pedigree, the pedigree to handle long distance. However, this is a horse that never got support of the betters, being a chat trainee. That is not normal because always the chat brown horses takes money. Okay, his debut was a sprint race. We can forgive that because this horse is not a sprinter. But the, the other races, he was three to one and five to one of his last in his, on his last race. He's improving each race, but I need. I think he needs to move forward again to win this race. And another thing I don't like is the low votes. Five to two is too low for him. He just, he just broke his maiden, and I would not take that low votes on risk taking. Do you think the odds maker could be wrong, or do you think the five to two is accurate? Oh, I think it's too low, five to two. He just broke his maiden, and he beat horses like the Reds. He's not a, a not an outstanding horse. Well, I think Risk Taker could win, but as he said, the odds are kind of low. And I also thought he got a perfect trip in that race. Uh, he saved ground on both turns, and then he switched out in the stretch run. So I thought it was a very good trip. And maybe he needs that kind of trip again to win, but I, I do think he could win. Just let's talk about the Pletcher horses. Let's start with Donegal Bay. Donegal Bay broke his maiden on December 12 at Gulfstream by four and a quarter lengths. He led from gate to wire. And there are two things to note. I liked how he showed speed in comparison to his debut at Saratoga, where he didn't show that much speed and he never factored. And he also closed strongly. Um, he was a length ahead in the first part of the race, and then he was four and a quarter lengths ahead at the finish line. So I thought he did improve over his debut at Saratoga. And he didn't earn a strong figure on Time Form US, but that's fine because it was off the layoff. And I just think it's not a strong field, and this horse will be either on the lead or pressing the lead. So he should be in a good position. What do you think of Donegal Bay? Well, Donegal Bay has a good pedigree to handle the distance, and he uh, he would be just pressing the, the pace. And uh, I think the pace setter would be Capo Kane. and he would be second or very near Capo Kane. and. This is a horse that he can improve on his third race, and he has a shot. The thing I don't like is this: is this is a Jutmont bread, and he cost only ninety hundred, ninety thousand dollars. That is too cheap for a Jutmont farm bread. But. He faced in his last race some good horses like Simba Beach, American Law. American Law then ran very well against Dynamic One and, and I, forgot, I don't, don't remember now the winner, but that was a, a strong race. So Donegal Bay against this weak field, I think he has a shot to win. I used him in my top three picks. Yeah, he's my top choice. Uh, he's a grandson of Flute, who won the 2001 Kentucky Oaks, and she also won the 2001 Alabama Stakes. 
But like you said, given that fact, it is kind of strange that he only cost 90k, especially with Uncle Mo on top. Yes, too cheap to be to, to be through. Let's talk about the one million dollar Pletcher Colt, and that is Overtoke. He's a son of Curlin and got lucky who won 950k in her career. And Overtoke has been a slow learner. He broke his maiden in his third start by two lengths at Aqueduct. Um, he was third by 21 lengths to known agenda and greatest honor two starts ago at nine furlongs. And that was kind of disappointing because you would expect him to like nine furlongs, but it was only his first try at the distance. Uh, what do you think of Overtoke? I don't like the fact that he doesn't know how to switch leads. Yes, yes. Uh, his last race, he won uh, over a mile, and he didn't change leads in that race. Uh, but he has a really classy pedigree. He's uh, curling out of God Lucky, but by AP Indy. And indeed, he cost $1 million. This is a horse that would love this distance. And he's a winner at Aqueduct. And okay, I think this is a horse that needs space, who need pace because he's a bit slow. And if he changed leads, I think he would be a factor in the in the stretch. I will use him, but I think he's useful underneath. Not sure uh, a winner. I think he's a pretty good looking Belmont Stakes horse. But Probably. I don't know about the Derby Trail. Let's talk about Capo Kane, who is three to one on the morning line. And I actually picked him last time in the Jerome Stakes. He won by six and a quarter lengths, and he looked pretty good doing it. It looked like he had a little more left. Um, he runs kind of greenly in the stretch. Uh, he he kind of shifted out in the lane before the jockey straightened him out, but still, it, it was pretty impressive. And he also broke his maiden at Parks Racing. What do you think of Capo Kane? Yeah, Capo Kane is doing all the things right. And that will, that was really good to one on parks and then one on Aqueduct. So okay, he's moving up a bit in class. He's facing probably a bit tougher horses, but nothing outstanding. The distance, I think, would be would not be a problem, and we would see him again taking the lead and trying to ward the field. I do think he'll face some pressure this time from Mr. Doda and Donegal Bay, so we'll see if Capo King can handle the pressure. But he's in my top three; he's probably my third choice. I just think that Donegal Bay is probably the more valued choice. I don't know, Mr. Doda is just broke his mind in a five and a half furlong race. Not sure he can stay too much in this race. Oh, I don't think he will stay. I, I just think he will provide cheap speed to weaken whoever's up front. And in that case, I think David David Dillon uh, would sit behind Mr. Doda and try to write. I don't see, I can't see him dueling with Mr. Doda. Hmm, well, maybe so. Uh, let's talk about Royal Number really quick. The Laurel Park horse, who won by seven and three fourths lengths. Now, you know, I don't like Laurel Park horses, so I pretty much ignore them. Uh, what do you think of Royal Number? Yes, like you said, I don't trust too much these Laurel horses. He could run well because, again, this is not a great, great field. But I'm not using him. Also, I think he would run better than the other Laurel horse, Chuck Quinkin. At least for your number, it has the, I think, has more stamina. All right. Uh, do you want to close it? Yes. I th- I'm going with Capo Kane. I think this horse, at least he can beat this field. Not sure a stronger field, but I think he can, he can handle this field. My second choice is 
I think Donegal Bay. Donegal Bay is a horse with a classic pedigree. I don't know why he's so cheap, but I think he has the pedigree to stay a bit and run well in attack with the and my third choice is Overtook, the other Pletcher horse. My choice is Donegal Bay. I don't know if he's the best horse in the race, but certainly he'll offer some kind of a price. And risk taking, risk taking could win as well. Uh, he's going to be a short price. Royal, no, not Royal Number. Capo Kane is my third choice. So my choices aren't that exciting. I have no double digit long shots, but. That's how it is. Thanks for watching our show today. That's our analysis of the winter stakes at Aqueduct. And we'll look at next week's races and see if there's anything interesting. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck with your bets. Okay, see you next week.